Like many people, I need to work on my backup solution because it's a lot worse than it could be. And hardware and software have this strange way of failing in a lot of weird ways that you could never expect, so it's always better to just have another copy just in case. And I'm going to be using some spare hardware I have for this that I happen to have quite a bit of. When setting up this new backup job, I also wanted to play with some new software that I haven't used very much in the past, just to kind of put it under some testing and see how well it would work in my use case. In this video, I'm going to go over the process and how I kind of started testing things, the different software I used, and some of the issues I ran into. But before I go into that process, let's go over the hardware I'm backing up and what hardware I'm going to be backing it up onto. The source for my backup is going to be a Proxmox server with ZFS using SAMR to share it directly on the host. Unlike what I normally recommend of just running your file server in a VM, I'm just running it on the hardware. This would be basically identical to having it in Debian with ZFS, for example. Proxmox is just running its own VMs in the background, and I'm not currently concerned with backing up those VMs. The destination is going to be some of my spare hardware. So the first thing is my EMC Isilon server. This is a dual LGA 1366 server with dual L5630 low power 1366 Xeons, 24 gigs of RAM. And then because this system's filled with 2 terabyte drives, so I have a total of 10 2 terabyte drives and two 200 gigabyte SSDs for caching or other uses, I added another SAS JBOD I got. So this happens to be a Super Micro 2U case, but instead of the normal computery motherboard guts in it, it just has a SAS cable running straight through it. So then I can put this little SAS expander card in it, and it just adds it. So now instead of 10 2 terabyte drives, I have 18. I found these used kind of server drives very cheap often. Sometimes they come with the server almost, and sometimes they're like 30 bucks, or I've seen them as for 30 bucks in the past. They often have about 30,000 hours from my experience, but they're pretty darn reliable. I've actually had about 20 some of these in my usage in the last six years, and I've yet to have any of them fail. So I've been actually pretty happy with these drives. Since I have 18 2 terabyte drives that probably don't have too much longer on their clock, and I also wanted one big congruent space to put my data in instead of having 18 separate arrays, I needed to set up some sort of RAID array. I've been using ZFS for a lot of things personally and have been actually quite happy with it, but you know, I want to try something else. I've I feel like I've kind of seen what ZFS can do. So I wanted to try MDADM on Linux, which is a bit more of a classic and more traditional RAID than Linux. Now for the OS that I wanted running under it, I wanted to try something a little bit different. I've been using a good amount of Debian-based distros in the past, so my main server is Proxmox, which is kind of just rebranded Debian with a few packages on it. So I wanted something kind of maybe Red Hat based. I decided to give Fedora Server a try. I've actually very rarely used Fedora Server, is a quite fast moving distro, so a lot of updates, it's running a very modern kernel, um, which is typically not recommended for server use, but I kind of wanted to just see what, give it a feel. I get the latest software updates, but probably a bit less stability. So I gave it a try. I put Fedora 34 on the hardware, installs just fine, didn't have really any issues, and I can just start SSHing in. And it kind of actually feels like any other Linux distro. For most basic tasks, they all kind of feel the same, with the big difference to me is you type in DNF instead of APT for installing packages. But I started putting on some of my favorite packages to manage it via SSH, like Tmux, HTOP, ATOP to view usage, and then I started looking in the software to manage the backups. So I'd like a relatively simple utility that can pull data off of the file shares on the other system, do it incrementally, so my plan was to only have the server running when I need it to, so maybe every month pull only the changes in, so I don't want to read all 20-some terabytes from the main server if I don't have to. Only store those changes. I'd like some compression and deduplication if possible in the array, just to save the amount of storage space and allow me to keep older versions. And I'd like relatively easy trimming of older copies, so then I can only keep the latest few, so I don't need to keep all my changes going back the last few years only maybe a couple more recent changes. And of the software I've looked into, rsync with a good amount of options can definitely do this. I've seen configurations where it uses a lot of links to make linked folders of all the changes. Um, Borg backup was one of my kind of bigger ones to look into. And the other option was just using ZFS send and receive. But that would require I don't use MDADM, but ZFS would be another way of doing it. And I decided to give Borg a shot first. 
I've used Borg in the past for backing up some other systems, and I've been relatively happy with it. It's a simple program, and it works like a few others where what it does is it turns all the files into little chunks. And each chunk I believe is like a few kilobytes in size, maybe a bit bigger. And then as kind of an internal database to manage it, and if it sees it's the same file in a later backup, it just references that chunk. And there's like a trimming operation where it deletes older chunks as needed. Unlike other software where it kind of has a big backup copy and incremental ones. There's no big files to all split into chunks. And while I've played with it in the past and it works well, I was also kind of curious how well this chunk system would work on a older hardware, a lot of data, and relatively high speeds of copying backups. So I set up a little script just to copy new files into it, just making the date of the chunks, and the first thing I noticed was it was going pretty slow at about 50 megabytes per second. And I was thinking, there's no way that's right. I'm copying it from about an 8 disk RAID Z, Z array on my main server, which isn't under heavy usage, to an 18 drive RAID 6 over a 10 gigabit connection. I've tried doing like DD tests and I'm getting in the range of 300 megs per second. I did a Samba test from that server just to make sure it can do it, and it was getting about 300 megs per second. And for some reason, like, I tried doing a copy just of a CP and I was getting that same 50 megs per second too. And I kept looking at this, and the best guess I could come up with was there was a single threaded limit. It didn't really seem to be pegging a CPU to 100%, but it still seemed to be somewhat single threaded limited. I'm guessing that's just due to Borg being a single threaded application, and my L5630 is running about 2 gigahertz on a very old architecture at this point and just not really being designed for speed. I didn't have any hardware to test Borg on, but my guess is, and from my experience in the past, if I was running it on something a bit more modern, it would be able to run those backups much faster than in this case. So I went back to the whole, I'd like these backups to run faster, because copying 20 terabytes of data at 50 megabytes per second can take a very long time. So the first thing I was kind of thinking of was ZFS Send. I'd have to replace MDADM, which I wanted to experiment with, but ZFS send should be the fastest really way to do it. Because instead of copying files, ZFS send copies blocks. And it's relatively simple where ZFS just kind of throws the blocks over. So I followed one of the examples online of just using SSH tunnels and ZFS send and receive, and I got about the same speeds. Looks like another single threaded limit because it was relying on SSH to encrypt everything and then decrypt it at the other end. And encryption, on, especially on these older CPUs, can take a good amount of that CPU power, which I kind of didn't have. But luckily I found another way to do it, and that's using Netcat. So unlike SSH, Netcat doesn't encrypt it. Netcat basically just takes the output of ZFS send and just puts it in a TCP packet over the network. Not recommended security-wise, but I had a direct connection link, so if someone's tapping that, I have bigger problems. But I was doing that, I was getting about 200 some megabytes per second, which is actually pretty great speed-wise. And I even created a little script that would prepare Netcat on this system, it would then run a script on the other system to start copying the data, and then an exit when done, and then name it correctly. And then I started thinking about incrementals, as that only sends a full data set and not the incrementals. Luckily, ZFS send can send incrementals, but the host has to manage the incrementals. As you tell it basically two data sets and say copy the incremental between them. And that would work fine for me. The problem is that means if I wanted to run a backup every month, I'd have to keep month old snapshots on the host. And since I can oftentimes move data relatively quickly, this kind of would mean there might be a lot of data stuck on the snapshot. And I'd really prefer that the incrementals be ba managed by the destination, not the source. And from what I could see of ZFS send, there was no easy way to have the destination offline a good amount of the time and have it still manage the incrementals of ZFS send. So the other thing I thought of was, what if I just forgot about incrementals and just use ZFS dedupe? I had those two 200 gigabyte SSDs that I could use as a special device, and that means it would essentially store the metadata, and this would hopefully prevent some of the performance hits of running ZFS or dedupe directly on the hard drives, as the SSDs would be much faster, 
and the dedicated metadata device could speed this up quite a bit. But I still ran into the same issue that I'm copying all the data every time, or I have to let the host manage the incrementals, neither of which what I, is what I really wanted. So then I take another look back at Borg, and just realizing maybe I'll have to deal with this speed, because all the other backup and file copy software I found is limited to 50 megabyte per second speed, and the only way to get the 200 megabytes per second speeds with ZFS send is doing things that I didn't want to do features and configuration wise. So a bit more Borg testing, I kind of realized I'd have to suck it up and just take forever on the full backup, but the other ones would take probably only an hour or two for the changes, maybe a day. So that was a lot more okay in my thought process. So I just kind of started getting into the maybe I'll have to just deal with the time, but that's okay mindset. And unfortunately, my first backup took approximately a week to complete at those speeds. The one thing I did find is because a lot of my data spread up into some bigger categories, running two of those at the same time would run at basically twice the speed. And that confirmed my belief that it was a single threaded limit. So I just kind of had to let them sit and run and copy those 20 terabytes over. And now it's been about a week of waiting for Borg to finish its first task. It ran pretty uneventfully and just slowly chugged along at about 50 megabytes per second backing up all of my data. I then started running some incrementals with very minor changes and it would take about half an hour to do an incremental backup of my 20 terabyte array with roughly 200,000 files. I don't see that as a main issue, though it does seem to be single thread limited. Running a prune job, which would essentially delete older backup copies, took quite a bit of time though, and it's just one disadvantage of a chunk based backup solution. In this case, it took a little bit longer than the small incrementals at a little over an hour to complete in my case. The prune seemed to be limited by disk read speed, with all of my drives reading at about two to 300 megabytes per second total. Now let's move on to what I consider to be the most important part of any backup solution, restoring the backups back to where you want them. Borg has a few ways to restore backups, but my preferred way is using Borg mount. And Borg mount creates a little fuse file system that mounts those chunk files so you can browse it like any other directory and copy files off of it to wherever you please. And this solves both of my kind of use cases for restoring backups. And the first is restoring a few files in case I overwritten the file or deleted something by accident. I can just do a Borg mount and copy the file that I want and paste it. And the other solution is to just restore everything in case the whole raid failed or the server just crashed and I could never access data again from it. But unfortunately, Borg mount and the other restores have about the same speed limit of around 50 megabytes per second no matter what I tried, likely due to the single thread limit. I did try doing a few checksums and the backups all restored correctly with the right data. Overall, some of the things I'd say I'd learned from this backup thing was primarily A, single thread speed matters a lot more than you'd normally think. So for a lot of little tasks like backups and in other cases like updates and copying files, they're pretty limited by single threaded performance, so having a better single threaded CPU is great even if you're doing a lot of server normal tasks on it. The other thing is I've kind of learned to have a bit more appreciation for Borg. It's a pretty solid backup solution, very reliable in my use, never really had any issues or errors, and just kind of worked. Um, the incremental backup times were relatively fast for my type of workload and similar or better than the other tools I've played with in the past, and doing things like pruning the backup was pretty seamless. And compared to other backup solutions that have dedicated files for each state, the great thing with prune or the chunk based backup solutions is you can just kind of arbitrarily delete previous backups. It does have a little bit more overhead, whereas the prunes and board can easily take almost up to an hour of more large backup sets, whereas with something like Veeam with individual files, you can just delete a backup chain and let the file system handle that in however much time the file system takes. Thanks for watching this video on my Borg backup setup, and subscribe for more computery, servery, and networky videos in the future.